Welcome to this uh, IB Maths Intense uh, session on counting principles. We're moving on from simple permutations to permutations with restrictions. And these are the sort of questions that can sometimes make your head hurt because you can't just apply a formula. You need to think logically about what's being asked. What is a restriction that's being applied? And what do you know? Because sometimes that will help you to find out what you don't know. So we need to think carefully. So what I've done in this video is just put a whole load of different types of questions together just so you can uh, see the way to approach uh, questions with restrictions. So first, um, a recap, simple permutation question. We had seven letters in the word IB Maths. How many unique ways could we arrange them? And the answer was simply seven factorial because there were seven ways of placing the first letter down, six of the second and so on. That was nice straightforward, no limitation to what we're doing. But imagine we've got the same seven letters, IB Maths, but this time we're told that the first letter has to be a vowel. So if I think about my seven letters there, the restriction here, always think about where is the restriction, is on the first letter. And the first letter has to be a vowel. Well, in IB Maths, there are two vowels. So actually, how many ways could I place the first letter? There's only two because it's got to be a vowel. But then there are no limitations. So of the remaining six, I could choose any of them to place second and then five and so on. And that will give me my total number of arrangements if the first letter must be a vowel. I'm not multiplying by seven, I'm multiplying by two at the beginning because there's only two uh, possibilities that would fit the restriction. Two times six factorial. Um, and that gives me a nice answer of 1,440. So notice there, we started by looking up where the restriction is. Let's have a look at these five numbers, one, two, three, four, five. I want to arrange them, but the restriction here is the arrangement must be an even number. So again, thinking about my five numbers, the restriction is on the final digit. It's got to be an even number, so it's got to be a two or a four. So again, how many ways now? How many am I choosing from for that last digit? There's only two possibilities that could go in there. And now there are no restrictions. I can choose anything to go anywhere else. So there are four different options for the first digit. There would only be three left, and then two left, and then one left. So you can see this, this is four factorial. My solution would be two times four factorial. The restriction coming first, the two. OK, so um, that will give us an answer of 48, 2 times 4 factorial. This time I've got a uh, combination of things. I've got some letters and some uh, numbers, 1, 2, 3 and A and B. How many ways could I arrange them if there's no limitations? Well, that's nice and straightforward. There's five cards. They can go anywhere. It would just be 5 factorial or 120. But let's place some restrictions. And the restriction says the three numbers have got to stay together. So in this case, I put them, this is my method, is put the things that need to stay together in a box. If you want things to stay together, you put them in a box. So what have I got here? I've got a box and the letters A and B. So I've actually got three things, three factorial ways of arranging a box and the letters A and B. But I also need to remember inside the box, there are three items that will also need to be arranged uniquely. So how many ways can I arrange those three uh, numbers? Well, there's three factorial. So multiplying the two together, three factorial for the box and the A and B. And then inside the box, there are three factorial ways of arranging the numbers would give me my result of 36, three factorial times three factorial. What if I had the same setup, but this time the three numbers have got to stay together and the two letters have got to stay together? So now I start by thinking, well, actually, I've just got two boxes that I need to arrange. And there's two factorial ways of doing that or two. But then I've also got to arrange the numbers inside their box. And I arrange those three factorial ways. And my two letters, I arrange those two factorial ways, multiplying all that together gives me an answer of 24, 24 ways where the three numbers are together and the two letters are together. 
sometimes I can find an answer more quickly by working out what I do know as opposed to what I don't know. And in this question, it asks me, how many ways can I arrange the five cards if the two letters can't be next to each other? Well, that's difficult to work out because I'm going to have to think about all the different places the A and B could go to, uh, to, to fit that where they're not together. But I know from the previous example, it's a lot easier to think of all the ways of arranging the letters where the two, uh, the letters and the numbers, where the two letters are next to each other. So it, um, I also know how many ways that I can arrange everything. So another way of looking at this question is to say the number of ways where they can't be together is equal to the total number of arrangements of all of them minus the arrangements where they are together. And that makes logical sense. If they're not next to each other, they must be next to each other. So let's uh, work that out. For them to be next to each other, I would have one, two, three, plus a box. I would have four factorial times two factorial because I've got to arrange the two things in the box. So that's how many ways they are next to each other. And then the total arrangements, well, there are just five things. So that would be five factorial. So I'd have five factorial uh, minus four factorial times two factorial which is 72. So that works because I know how to work out how things are next to each other. And you might be asked how many ways they can't be next to each other. So work out the total and subtract the number of ways where they are next to each other. Um, pin number. They like this kind of question. Two distinct letters of the alphabet followed by three distinct digits. So the easy question, no restrictions, how many possible pin numbers are there? Well, to start with, I'm going to choose two distinct letters from the alphabet. That's 26P2, or if we were like, it's 26 times 25. And then the three distinct digits from 0 to 9, I'm going to choose from my 10 um, distinct digits. I'm going to arrange three chosen from the 10 which is also the same as 10 times 9 times 8. Multiplicative, um, can work out my solution, and it's a nice big answer, 468,000. Small restriction there, which is that the, um, the letters need to come before the three distinct digits. Let's uh, look at a more of a restriction. So this time, how many possible pin numbers, if it's got to start with the letter A, and end in the number 9. So here I can think about my two uh, letters of the alphabet and then I can think about my three distinct digits. Now we're saying this has got to be an A and this has got to be a 9 at the end. So I'm not actually choosing anything to put in those two places, they're fixed. They don't have any, um, uh, uh, any impact on the result. So I'm interested in these three remaining places. So here for my uh, letter of the alphabet here, there are 25 different options I could put in there. And then for my digits, there are nine left to choose from to go there and eight in there. So my solution is going to be 25 times nine times eight. If I wanted to write that as a permutations notation, I'm arranging one selected from 25 and then I'm arranging two selected from nine. Either way, these give me the same result, 1800, 25p1 times 9p2. Right, your turn. Here's a question for you uh, with five parts, just testing us on our logic. Have a go at these uh, questions, pause the video, give it a try, and then I'll go through the solutions shortly. Okay, hope you had a go at those questions. Uh, so you know the setup. There are 17 people lining up for a photo, three outfield players, three goalkeepers and a coach. How many ways could they line up if they can stand anywhere? No limitations here at all. 17 people, 17, 17 factorial ways that they could line up. I'm not going to work that out on the calculator. You can do that, but it's 17 factorial. The second part said, what if the coach must stand in the middle? So here's the coach. He's got to stand in the middle. There are going to be eight people 
either side of him or her, um, how many ways can they be arranged because the coach is fixed. We're not doing anything with him, he's fixed, he's standing in the middle. So there are just 16 factorial ways uh, of arranging the other 16 people. How many ways if the coach must stand at the end? So this time, the coach must either go here or here. So there are two different ways that the coach can stand at the end, and then there's 16 people being arranged next to him. So it's going to be two times 16 factorial this time, twice as many ways if the coach must stand at the end. How many ways if the goalkeepers must be in the middle? Well, this is rather like uh, the other questions, putting things in a box. We're going to put the goalkeepers in the middle, in a box. And then there are going to be eight, uh, rather there aren't going to be eight, there's going to be um, seven on either side, 14 plus 3, 17 people in the, in the squad. Seven on either side, and then the goalkeepers. The goalkeepers are fixed, so I'm only going to be arranging 14 people. But let's not forget that I've got to arrange the three goalkeepers inside their box. So it's going to be 14 factorial times 3 factorial. But the goalkeepers are fixed in the middle, so uh, that's all I need to worry about. 14 factorial times 3 factorial, which gives a very big result, which you can work out on your calculator. And then lastly, what if the goalkeepers must stand together? So this time they're not fixed in the middle, so I'm ending up with my goalkeepers in a box and then another 14 people. So in total, I've got 14 people in a box to arrange. That's 15 factorial. But then, of course, inside the box, there are three goalkeepers who need to be arranged, and they can be arranged uh, three factorial ways. So last question there, 15 factorial times three factorial. I hope you found that um, useful. Um, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the YouTube channel, IB Math Intense, and tell your friends I'm here. Email me on ibmathintense at gmail.com or send me a message via YouTube if there's anything in particular you'd like me to cover or any specific questions you have. In the meantime, enjoy your maths and take care.